Hello YouTube, I wanted to make another video for you. This time it's going to be on the disassembly and reassembly of the Nagant Revolver, uh, model 1895. And uh, <clears throat> I want to mention right away that uh, when I disassemble this, you will see that a lot of the par parts have been polished uh, and the spring is much thinner than uh, you'll find in your uh, standard uh, revolver. This was done to reduce the uh, trigger weight um, in both double action and single action. Um, I'll just show you for example, I mean, the pistol is unloaded, as you can see, okay, so I'll just show you, how light my, uh, double action trigger, uh, is now, and single action as well, just, uh, very light, I'm doing it with the tip of my finger, that so uh, when you see the parts inside you're gonna notice that all of them have pretty much been polished uh, and uh, I can go over this in a different video but uh, for right now this is the video on just uh, disassembly and reassembly of the Nagant revolver okay we've already verified that the, that the revolver is unloaded okay so we're gonna proceed with disassembly I usually start, um, well, first of all, you're going to want to use uh, 3 16 bit. I'm not sure if you actually see this, but it's a 3 16 bit. And I think you can use it for everything. Let me just try if it fits in the slot. Yeah, okay. So you can use it for every screw on this pistol, okay? I begin my disassembly by removing the spring for the gate okay and that's that screw right there and it comes out with the spring okay we can keep them together for now okay then I usually remove the gate itself by turning the screw out, making sure that I'm not brushing up against the frame of the pistol. Okay. The gate can be lifted out, and I'm gonna keep this screw with this, with it. Okay. At this point, we want to rotate this rod and move it out. And you can see that there is a groove in it hopefully okay <clears throat> then we'll turn the entire assembly the sleeve on the barrel and this rod we'll turn them to align these two marks right here in the frame okay and at that point we have enough clearance to take out the pin or the cylinder that our cylinder actually rotates on Okay, so we can take it out just like that, set it aside, and at this point the cylinder will come out. Okay, if you look at the cylinder, you'll notice that there is a notch on one side. You can see it right here, it's like a little dot, dark spot right here. Okay, <clears throat> what you need to do is turn this inner sleeve until it can come out where there is a little detent just trying to find it there so you see that little detent on the cylinder or a little pin or whatever is sticking out of it okay <coughs> you can take this inner sleeve out and the spring and you'll actually notice that the spring on mine is shortened and I've shortened it on for a reason to uh, further reduce the uh, trigger pull okay so we're gonna set these aside at this point we're ready to well actually we could take care of this assembly here by removing the screw 
and taking out this re retaining spring and this little screw. You see that little notch on the retaining spring? This notch is what rides in the groove of this ejector rod. Okay. We're going to set that aside. <clears throat> now I'm going to take care of the main screw that holds the two sides of the frame together. Okay. Unscrewing that. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to flip the revolver over and just lightly tap with the back of the screwdriver, lightly tap on the trigger guard a few times until the, the, this plate broke, breaks loose, okay? And that's that plate. If you want to take the grips off, all you do is unscrew this screw right here and this screw. This screw will allow you to remove this center piece, okay? Of the, of the uh, wooden grip insert. And then this inner screw right there will free this uh, left grip okay but for right now we don't need to do this okay so here you see the inside uh, of the revolver basically and you can observe the system how everything functions okay all right you can make sure that everything works just so that when you reassemble it you can test it again uh, we're going to loosen the screw for the trigger guard right here just enough to where we can see that it's free okay we're going to turn the trigger guard down and just lift it off of its pin right here in the frame okay at this point uh, you can just remove the screw altogether the trigger guard but I don't need to so I'm gonna keep it in <clears throat> when you grasp this main spring here you're gonna to want to lift up on the back side there's a little pin uh, that's a part of the spring that sits in the little hole in the frame okay you're gonna to want to take uh, that and just lift it out of that little hole you see that that was the hole where it was sitting and that's that little pin you can see it on the bottom of the spring okay At this point I'm gonna hold this here firmly and slowly allow the spring to expand from under the hammer right there this arm Then I'm gonna take this other arm out of the its place in the over the uh, trigger okay and now the the main spring is completely out and you can probably notice that my spring is a lot thinner than, than your stock one and it's because I actually uh, filed it down or sanded it down uh, to reduce its uh, tension okay and I've done both this arm very lightly very slightly on this arm and a lot more I've reduced on this bottom arm of the spring okay so that's that uh, when with the spring when the spring is out you can simply turn the hammer so that its firing pin is uh, out from the frame and you lift it out okay then you take your trigger rotate, rotate it pretty much all the way down and lift it out just like that and you have this arm here that you just lift out of the trigger okay then you have this camming block I think or whatever it's called you take that out and then the very last thing is this thing that pushes the cylinder and the cartridge forward before firing you lift it out and kind of at an angle it comes out because of that little leg on it okay and pretty much you're now uh, well also this screw right here will free this grip okay and then if you want to take the uh, lanyard loop uh, out what you want to do is I believe you need to take the grip off and then re remove this pin right here 
okay so you're going to want to drive it out i think from from the other side and then you can unscrew the lanyard loop uh, because you see that it's threaded on the inside here okay so you'll be able to just unscrew it and you don't want to do it by the actual ring you want to grasp it firmly with something like pliers or something like that uh, after of course you've protected the uh, the surface and just uh, unscrew it to remove it okay so now for reassembly we're gonna proceed in uh, reverse order we're gonna put this part in and rotate it forward I'm gonna use this camming part and you'll notice that it's not obviously it's not the same on each side so the longer side is what you put down into its channel okay and kind of rest it in its uh, lower position then we're going to take the arm and put it inside the trigger like so and you'll see this arm on the trigger and that will be interfacing with this part rotate the arm up so that it kind of goes in between this coming part and the frame okay test it quickly just to make sure that you've reassembled everything correctly so far okay leave it in its kind of mid position oh hammer uh, for this you need a different size bit but if you want to take out take off the sear searing surface here you're going to want to remove this screw all the way and then this uh, this thing will come out the sear will come out here okay you'll notice that there's a spring there's another another leaf spring under it just kind of take note of what it looks like when it's all assembled before you actually remove it so that it's easier for you to uh, reassemble it and then if you drive this pin out right here you'll be able to take off the firing pin okay from the hammer but for right now we're just going to place it over the trigger right here so that the trigger that searing surface on the trigger sits between the sear and the and the uh, claw of the hammer I guess okay and you're gonna want to turn it all the way out so that the hammer is fully forward and the trigger is fully forward okay and here comes the tricky part and a lot of people are struggling with this um, what I normally do when I place the spring back uh, you'll notice that that arm of the spring has a little cutout right here that needs to go inside the trigger and you'll notice where I'm putting it in right now you see that opening that's where it needs to go now we need to collapse this second arm under the hammer okay as far forward as we can and then turn this side align it uh, with the hole in the frame and put that pin into that hole okay and that's how you replace the spring you can test it making sure that everything works see that okay well that's normal because it didn't pull the trigger properly too slow yeah there you go <clears throat> so everything has been reassembled so far correctly we're going to take our trigger guard and just put it over the pin rotate it forward and under that screw and we're going to turn the screen, screw down making sure that it grabs the trigger guard nice and tight not not over tightening but nice and tight okay then we're going to take the other side of the frame align it basically making sure that it kind of goes into its place you'll notice that on this side it needs to be there a little snap okay uh, make sure that there's no seams here or here okay and that it's just in there correctly okay then you're going to take your frame screw 
and reinsert it and turn it nice and tight. Okay. We're going to want to insert our ejector rod with the groove in it facing us at this point. Okay. Just like that. We're going to take the retaining spring and screw. There you go. We're going to put it in its place, making sure that the the spring, the little notch on the spring or a little protrusion on the spring actually goes uh, into the groove on the cleaning rod or ejecting rod, sorry. Okay. Tighten the screw and make sure that the rod is retained, that it doesn't come out by itself anymore. Okay. Make sure that you can also turn it when it's positioned correctly. You can see it, it can only do it in one spot. Okay. So when positioned correctly, this groove will allow it to turn. You see that? Okay. So take it all the way out. Let's make sure that we turn this sleeve over so that these notches align right here. Can you see them? I hope so. Okay. Then we'll replace oh. we'll replace this little sleeve inside the cylinder. First you'll align these uh, the, the little pin and the hole, put it in, and then turn it, give it maybe half a turn or something like that, and then let it go. <clears throat> and we're gonna want to reinsert that, depressing the forward part of it with the spring. Turn the cylinder gently into its place. Then we'll take our cylinder pin, put it all the way in, just like that. Okay. Turn the sleeve over that. Close the ejecting rod and turn it. See how we turned it from this position? I just turned it forward until it stops. Okay, then we're going to reinsert the gate. The gate has two protrusions, one here and one here. Both protrusions go towards the cylinder. Okay, so it should, the, that protrusion should go over the cylinder. Okay, and we're going to take that screw and tighten that. take the spring and you'll see that it goes in this way and we'll take that screw and tighten that oops you don't want to do that not to scratch the frame good thing I wasn't applying too much pressure there you go and now your Nagant revolver is completely reassembled okay Let's test it. We know that it's unloaded. Okay. Everything works fine. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you need uh, more information as far as lightening the trigger pull on this. But uh, this should conclude my. Uh, Disassembly and reassembly video for the Nagant Revolver model uh, 1895. Alright, thank you for watching.